Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, another month, another haul. I got a lot of things to show y'all. Things that I'm real excited about. Uh, we've got at least one mystery in here and um, some gifts, some just this, that, and the other. Uh, July is my birthday month and I'm not, I haven't like gotten to that piece of my haulage by the time I'm filming this. So I expect in the next haul, I will probably have a lot of things that were like birthday related, uh, but not for this one. I have plenty to be getting on with. I basically decided to go ahead and film this because I hadn't gotten that birthday stuff yet. And when that comes like that will just like be the next level. So um, anyway, let's just go ahead and dive in to the stuff that I have as of right now. And as usual, I'll kind of go by different like categories or types of books. Okay, let's start with gifts. So these were not birthday related. These were just people being nice and sending me things. Um, so first of all, Leanna from Leanna's Library sent me Trick by Natalia Jaster. And this is a fantasy romance that Leanna really likes. And if you guys know her taste, she is like a picky ass bitch when it comes to fantasy <laughs> romance. And she really likes it. And so she thought that I would like it. And so she very kindly sent it to me. I absolutely like the cover on this is just so beautiful. Um, so that was very sweet of her. So I've got that. She describes this hero as a cinnamon roll. So that's promising, I think. And then uh, Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany sent me two arcs that she picked up for me when she was at BA and BookCon. The first is a graphic novel called Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. And this is, I think, just sort of like a contemporary, like coming of age type thing. So I'm intrigued when I'm in the mood for a graphic novel. This will be a good little fill in one. And then she also sent me The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring for us to do a buddy read on. We have already done this and unfortunately, even though this was a gift, I did not end up loving this one all that much. But I think that this is gonna be a very polarizing book. I talked about that in my June wrap up that I do think a lot of people will really like, including Bethany. She ended up really liking this one. So I'm glad I got the chance to read it. Um, it's a debut and I would definitely read more from this author in the future. This one didn't especially work for me, but I'm still very glad that she kindly sent it to me because it's a very hyped book. So I at least get to have an opinion pre it coming out of what the hype, like if it's merited or not. Next category is, category is uh, books that I got because of a challenge. So one of these I've read and one of these I have not yet read. Uh, so the one that I read was In West Mills by Deshaun Charles Winslow. Um, I can't tell you, I don't think you guys know what this is for yet. I liked but didn't love this. Like I gave, I just had, I was just sort of meh on it. I gave it three stars. It's very well written and I did really like the main character, but it just didn't personally fully connect for me. So I don't know that this is one that I'll like, hold on to, but if it sounds intriguing to you, I would say go for it. Uh, so I picked that one up for that challenge. And then the challenge that I know you guys don't know about yet uh, is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This book has been like literally everywhere <laughs> um, this year. It's very, very hyped. And I've been reticent to read it for reasons that I will talk about when we come to that challenge. I there was there was a specific reason why I didn't want to read this or would not have sought this out on my own. That being said, the more I kind of like thought what thought about it, about like in theory, like my kind of philosophical stance on this book. <laughs> and why I wasn't really wanting to read it. I think that this book actually in this particular book will not end up being a problem. So that was very vague. Stay tuned for that challenge and I'll get into more full thoughts about this. But everybody loves this. I'm sure I will too. Okay, and then we move to pre-orders. I actually only have one this month and it is could be considered part of like a collection thing. So I'm gonna just like transition into collections in general. First of all, uh, the pre-order I had was Wolf Rain by Nalini Singh. I collect all of the side changeling books in hardback. So when this came out, this was no different. Uh, I actually though had an e-arc of it. So I had gotten to read it before it came out. Absolutely loved it. You guys have heard me talking about this one a lot, but I do have the actual hardback now, which is great. And then um, a few, a couple of Agatha entries. So one of these, I think, I can't remember if I showed you when I got this facsimile, so I'm gonna show it to you again. But this one I know I haven't shown you. I found this at the used bookstore, Come Tell Me How You Live. 
um, which is one of Agatha Christie's like autobiography things. And this specifically was about her time being on site with her husband, who is an archeologist in the Middle East. So she actually spent a lot of her years um, kind of in the back half of her life in the Middle East with her husband while he was on a dig. Um, and this is her autobiography talking about that. So I found the facsimile edition at my used bookstore, which was really exciting. But that reminded me that I don't know that I ever showed you guys the sparkling cyanide facsimile edition I got when I got it. I know I showed it on Instagram, um, but I'm obsessed with this cover. I just think it's so cool. So if I didn't show you, I wanted to make sure I did, so. Anyway, little facsimile talk there. And then um, a new type of collection. So Dane at Dane Reads made me aware of this series or this line, which is called Pulp the Classics. And it's paperbacks that are like pulp noir type covers of classic novels. And there's a few of them that I really loved, including The Hound of the Baskervilles. I just thought that this was such a cool idea and such a cool addition. So I think I may try to pick up a couple of these and shout out to Dane for uh, making me aware that these exist. But I just think that this is super cool. And then um, I have made the decision. So like, this is a little bit of a, a shift in my collection strategy for those of you who are close watchers of my collection management stuff. So um, in theory, I always say that I don't like soft covers and I don't, that stands just because if you like, for me, most of the time when I have a soft cover book, I would probably rather have it as an ebook just because soft covers don't stand the test of time the same way that hardbacks do. So that's just a personal preference. Uh, but it has, I've been thinking about that and kind of revising that stance for books that are not gonna ever come out in hardback. They only exist in paperback, and especially in a situation where the author is an indie author. So I have three examples of things that I have these as eBooks already, but I want to own a physical copy. These are all independently published books. It's another way to support those authors. And so I decided to go ahead and start picking that up. And you'll see that in a couple of other categories that I'm, I'm especially in the category of like romance books in particular, just because so often they don't ever have a hardback release. Um, I'm, I'm softening my no soft cover stand for collecting reasons. I do get, as you've seen, I do get soft covers like for books that I'm not necessarily expecting to keep long term, but I don't often do that for collection reasons. Anyway, you probably don't care about that. But I do have three uh, either romance or fantasy romance picks I wanted to mention. So first I picked up Rhythm Chord and Malakin by Mariana Zapata in the soft cover. I have this as an ebook. Mariana Zapata, I think I have decided is my favorite current writing contemporary romance author. She writes slow burn romances. She is indie published and is very idiosyncratic in her writing style and it will not be for everyone, but I personally really enjoy it. And this is one of my favorites from her. My very two favorites are The Wall of Winnipeg and Me and Wait For It, and, and then probably followed by Culty. This would maybe be number four. Um, but anyway, so I picked a copy of this up. I also picked up a copy of Radiance by Grace Draven, just because I really do, like this is one of my most recommended uh, fantasy romance picks that I steer people towards if they are interested in trying this genre. This is the book that convinced Leanna that she does like fantasy romance. She absolutely adores this book. And um, yeah, I just, I decided I want, I really, I also just love the cover art on this. I think it's really pretty. And I decided I wanted to support her additionally beyond the ebook that I had. Similarly for the Midwinter Mail Order Bride, First of all, I love this cover. I am obsessed with this cover. This is a fantasy barbarian romance. And I really, like, I love Katie Wilde. She is an author who is like up and coming for me, especially her fantasy stuff. I also have been dipping into her contemporary stuff and like it as well. But this Deadlands um, series that she now has going for fantasy romance, I am like all about. I really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I wanted to go ahead and have a physical copy. I was sending Leanna a copy of this and when I was first looking at it, I thought it was only available as an ebook. So I sent her the ebook. And then when I was like going, like it recommended me the paperback at some point. And then I was annoyed that I didn't send her the paperback. But um, if she likes it, I will send her a hard copy of it. Um, but anyway, so this is really good. Okay, and now we come to the part of the video that we should now just start calling Mystery Corner. <laughs> Because in every one of my hauls in the last couple of months, I have had an, a protracted section where I talk to you about 
the isolated closed circle mysteries that I have been collecting or the almost isolated closed circle mysteries I've been collecting. In today's looking through this list, um, actually, I'm pretty sure I think that all of these are, are true isolated closed circle ones. Um, they're not like country house or locked room, but we'll find out. I haven't read any of these, I don't think yet. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I've read any of these yet, so I can't tell you for sure, but from what I can tell, I think they all qualify. So first up, A Mystery in White by J. Jefferson Fargion. He is one who has one other one that I know is an isolated closed circle mystery on my shelf um, that is called 13 Guests. And this one appears to be that everybody gets snowed into a train. This is one of the British Library crime classics. So I've been collecting several of these. And actually with that in mind, let's just go ahead and grab the other one in that series, which is The Santa Claus Murder by Mavis Doral Hay. And this is one where it's a country house. They get snowed in, people start dying. And I, oh yeah, the, okay. The guy who dies is dressed as Santa Claus when he's killed, which I think is kind of amazing. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I'm gonna grab this one and... Do, do, do. Where is it? Okay. Another Little Christmas Murder by Lorna Nicol Morgan. These are going to be two that go into my next Christmas mystery review because I last week I put up my Christmas in July one, but these are two that I've got my eye on for closer to Christmas time to, to review um, in my little three isolated close circle mystery reviews. So that was exciting. And then uh, I mentioned a theme of somebody being on a train. This one I'm extremely excited to get to. This is Anne Holt 1222, The Scandinavian Phenomenon. And this is one where they get snowed in, like there's a train wreck and there's a bunch of snow and they go to like a house or an inn and then people start dying. And I'm so excited because this is like such trope bait for me. Yeah, this one I'm really, really excited about. Okay, let's see. Another one I'm excited about because I've recently read a Cyril Hare and really enjoyed it. That was in my Christmas in July review, which was an English murder. I really like that one. And then the other isolated closed circle mystery that I think he wrote is with a bear bodkin. So this will also be revisiting an author that I already know that I quite enjoy. A repeat author for me is Death and the Dancing Footman by Mio Marsh. And thank you to those who helped me with the pronunciation on that. I've never heard that name said out loud before. So I was just flying blind. So I think it's Nayo or Neo. I like Nayo better. So we're going to go with that. Nayo Marsh. Um, I have one other one in the Roderick Allen series that I think falls into this trope. And this one uh, is another one where they're all snowed in at a house. And then I think that this is one where it's like a serial, like it truly is a serial killer where, yeah. So I think, I think I'll probably be into the trope there. More snow is this one, Hunting Game by Helen Helene Turston. So I read An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good by Helene Turston and liked it. I thought it was good. It wasn't like super memorable to me, but I enjoyed it. Um, I do think that that old lady though, I think in my review I said I would love it if that old lady ended up in St. Mary Mead and she and Miss Marple could like match wits. That would be like savage old lady death match. That would be really great. So anyway, I did like that. And then this one I think has, I'm, this is the one that I'm least sure if it's a true isolated closed circle mystery, but there's snow they're there for like a hunting party, kind of like, like the Lucy Foley book. If I can find another one with a hunting theme, the three of those will go into a review together. But um, yeah, so I'm excited to get to this. I'm, I'm into the wintry ass books, man. Like that's, that's my, it's my kink in books apparently. And then I've got three more. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in, I really am just collecting these right now. So I've got Security by Gina Wolstorf. This was somebody recommended this to me in a comment on my uh, Trapped in a Hotel one. And I think that this is another hotel mystery where it's like an isolated closed circle type thing. I picked it up because it was six bucks when I looked at it on Amazon and I was like, sure, let's just do that. So Security, uh, hopefully that will be a hotel -y type isolated closed mystery. Murder on the Leviathan from Boris Akun. Uh, this is one where they're trapped on a boat and people start dying. Oh no, who done it? We'll find out. And then last but not least, I have one of the funniest things I've ever received because it was just so not what I was expecting. So I wanted to get a physical copy of Some Must Watch by Ethel White just because um, it's cited a lot as a great example of an isolated closed circle type mystery. Um, a couple of movies have been made based off of it. Uh, I think the most of those are called The Spiral Staircase. And I wanted to get a physical copy. And so when I was doing my research, like both between Book Depository and Amazon, it seemed like what I ordered was like 
the best option in terms of like affordability and like what I was needing but it showed up like a workbook. So I knew it was print on demand, but it is literally a workbook, guys. <laughs> like it is the normal like printer paper size. So like this just makes me laugh really hard. So I, I don't know why, this just really cracked me up when it arrived because it was just so not what I was expecting. But you know, hopefully it ends up being one that I really like and enjoy. And I will enjoy my printer size. I, I'm gonna feel like I'm reading someone's like thesis or like, essay or fan fiction that they printed out for me. I don't know, this just made me laugh. Hey guys, so I finished filming. I ate my lunch as you can tell because my lipstick is gone. Um, and I was putting in some of these books into my database, in my I, database, my Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> I just have to tell you, I opened this up and was trying to figure out what the like publication year was, like how many pages, etc. And guys, they did not, they didn't print they printed the wrong thing. It is not Some Must, Some Must Watch by Ethel Lena White. It is a Bobsy Twin book. The Bobsy Twins on a Houseboat. That is the book. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's print on demand and I'm sure that they just made a mistake, but like, <laughs> so funny. Um, luckily, I think this is like 10 bucks. It's not like this was like a huge amount of money. And I'm sure that uh, Book Depository will help me out. But like, I can't, if I don't have to send this back, I'm totally going to include this in my next giveaway just so somebody can have this amazing artifact. If somebody else wants to read a Bobsy Twin mystery, pretty amazing. And then finally, I have four kind of just random ones. Um, two, no, three of them, I guess, are romances. So we'll start with that. So I have a fantasy romance. When I was buying Radiance by Grace Draven, I realized I've never actually read and Treat Me. So like, let's just go ahead and grab that because I've wanted to read it. And uh, Leanna is a big fan. And Amanda from The Naughty Librarian is a big fan. And I don't know. It's, I think, kind of like a Beauty and the Beast type retelling, which is my catnip. You guys know that. So I think that'll be pretty great. I um, then have two content, well, one of them is like, I'm not, neither of these I think are like true romances. I think they both are like romance adjacent. So the first one I think is probably more of like a rom-com or maybe like very romance-based chiclet. And it is N N Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune by Rosalie Lim. I picked this up because I just like, I'm really excited and down for like the um, more mainstreaming of this type of book that isn't really chick lit. It's not maybe fully contemporary romance. It's like, it really is like the romantic comedy tradition. I feel like we've been getting a lot of those published this year and particularly by Berkeley. I don't know why, but they seem to be like, they seem to have acquired a lot of those for this year. And I really like these kinds of books and I like want to support them being in the world. So that's why I decided to pick up a physical copy of it. Um, and I've heard pretty good things about this one. And I'm, I'm down for like own voices, authors and something just like different, like different types of people getting these books. So excited to get to this. I think this will be some like light summer fun type of thing. I do think that The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary is kind of a romance. But it's not really being sold quite. This like is in that weird space of like, well, like Jojo Moyes is the one who blurb like those ones where they are romances, but they're not sold that way. I don't know. Anyway, this seems like a slow burny like friends to lovers type thing because these two people are sharing the same apartment or the same flat and like sleeping in the same bed and everything, but one of them has a day job, one of them has a night job. So like they don't ever, aren't ever really supposed to be seeing each other, but then like they do end up seeing each other and I think they fall in love. Um, so I don't know, I've seen kind of mixed reviews on this, but I'm very, I'm very into that premise. And again, I'm into this type of book getting, like being successful. So um, I went ahead and grabbed, oh, by the way, this is the British cover, I think, cause I got this from Book Depository. It was cheaper on Book Depository and I much preferred this cover. So just FYI there think that that will do it for this particular haul. Like I said, it is my birthday month, so I, I have things, they're coming, because um, I got Amazon, Amazon money. Um, so I have some things coming. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know if any of these books particularly intrigued you, if you want me to get to them sooner rather than later. Let me know that below. Uh, but aside from that, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. Hope you're having a super lovely day and I will just talk to you soon.
Bye.